So we've built a brand new kitchen from scratch in the previous videos. Now we need some worktops and a backsplash. Right, so I've decided I want to make the backsplash first. The trouble is the materials that I've got to work with, the longest length is two meters. And from the end of the wall to the cabinet here, which would be a natural place to put a join, is 2.1 meters. So rather than start from this side, I think I'm going to start from this end and I'll have a join somewhere around where that socket is and then I can work on the second piece. The materials I'm going to be using in this project are a little unusual. This here is a roll of heavy duty vinyl flooring that I picked up from a guy on Facebook Marketplace for £25. It's typically designed for use on hospital and classroom floors. And the first job is to get it laid out in the sun so that it relaxes and flattens out as it's been stored in a cold garage for quite a while. But I could start getting it cut into pieces based on the sizes that I think I'm going to need and it's pretty tough to cut through this stuff with a knife. Now I know what you're thinking, why would I be using flooring to make a worktop and backsplash so let me explain. About three years ago a mate of mine who's a kitchen fitter made these worktops for our kitchen using birch plywood and laminate. I have a video all about that which I'll leave a link to below and I've really loved these worktops. The trouble is, laminate is incredibly expensive to buy. For one sheet, which is usually sized around 3 meters by 1200 millimeters, it's going to be at least 90 pounds, and that wouldn't be enough to cover the area we needed, so two sheets is 180. Add on a hefty delivery fee of 35 pounds, and that's 215 pounds just on the laminate alone before we've even bought any substrate to stick it down onto. So when I saw my friend Ben at Hugh and Orr restore a desk in one of his videos using a similar floor vinyl product, when I later found a roll on Marketplace for 20 £25 that we really like the look of, I snapped it up pretty quickly. We really like this design too, it has all the colour accents that we wanted like the dusky pinkish colour of our walls and the warm pastel colour of the cabinets. I'm going to use some 6mm moisture resistant MDF for the backsplash substrate and the first job is to mark this up so that I can get it fitted around the obstacles. As the wall unit has these end panels fitted, I want to cut the panel to fit around those. Looking good so far, but I just need one more cut around the windowsill. And with that done, it squeezes in there nicely. I'm not sure what adhesive I need to stick vinyl flooring down to MDF, but before I go and buy anything, I figured I may as well try what's in my cupboard already, which is some spray contact adhesive. So about half an hour ago, I stuck a piece of the vinyl down to this piece of MDF. Let's see if we can get it off. I can get it off, but it's really tough. If it sticks this well after half an hour, and I can still feel the glue is pretty tacky, so it's not fully dry yet, I'm sure it'll be fine. It's important to get good coverage on both the MDF and the back of the vinyl too when applying this spray adhesive, and it then needs a few minutes to go tacky. And then I got a couple of pieces of conduit laid down just to help me position it, and I got it all pressed down firmly. To trim away the excess I used a flush trim bit in the router, so the guide bearing on the bit runs around the shape of the MDF, trimming the vinyl flush. I then beveled my plunge saw to 3 degrees and cut a clean edge where the two sheets are going to join, in an attempt to try and get the join nice and tight. Before fitting the sheets to the wall I have a few obstacles to remove, like the faceplate of this socket, and these taps and tiles. As I was doing this I found some newspaper stuffed down the back of the sink used as a filler presumably and it was dated 1988 which means this sink has been installed for at least 35 years. I bought some grab adhesive to stick the panel to the wall. And I bought some tile trim to go around the edges which is going to add a nice finished look. I actually only needed a really small amount of this, the first bit to go at the end here, and I'm just using the same adhesive again, and then another tiny bit here at the top. Now I can get the bigger panel made up. First I need to cut a notch to fit around the wall fixing, 
and then I could scribe in the end wall which as you can see is not even remotely straight. I then carefully marked up the overlap so that I could work on joining the two boards together and I need to try really hard to get this right so that the join isn't visible. I beveled my blade again to 3 degrees and then I also need to make a cut out for the socket. And here you can see that I managed to get that join looking really nice. So that was good, or so I thought at the time. More on that soon. Because this panel was quite big, I asked my wife to help me lay down the vinyl just to make sure that it was overlapping on all sides. I couldn't afford to make any mistakes here as I wouldn't have enough vinyl to complete the job. So initially I thought I'd done a really good job on the join here but as you can see in this footage when I get it tight at the top the bottom seems to pop out a bit. I guess there's a bit of a hump in the wall at the bottom. And while I got it fitted as best I could unfortunately the bottom join kept kind of springing out a bit which was really disappointing. So I decided I'd come back later to see if I could fix the issue. I need another small piece of trim at the top and then I can caulk everything in to fill any gaps which will later get painted. And I needed to seal in the sink too using some clear silicon. And some shiny new brass screws to fix the taps to the wall. So as I mentioned I had issues with the join here at the bottom unfortunately. So now I'm going to see if there's anything I can do to fix this. I started by running a knife down the small gap between the vinyl, not to cut anything away but just to see if I could persuade the two pieces together. But that didn't really seem to do anything so then I added some masking tape either side of the join. And I carefully ran a bead of super glue down the edge of the vinyl that was protruding slightly. I applied as much pressure as possible with a piece of MDF and sprayed on some activator. Right, I think that has actually made a difference. It's still not perfect, but it's better than it was. I mentioned earlier that we really love our birch ply worktops and I'd like to do the same again, but unfortunately birch plywood has now gone up in price and is completely unaffordable. That's if you can even get it at all. A lot of timber yards just can't get their hands on it anymore. So when you can't make it, instead you have to fake it. And that's what I'm going to do here. I've got this thin offcut of 24mm birch ply that was left over from when we made the kitchen worktops years ago. Fortunately it was just barely long enough to span the length of my new worktop and I'm going to rip this into 40mm strips to use as edging for my new worktops. And for the main part of the worktops I have some 24mm MR MDF which unfortunately measured just a little bit thicker than the birch ply but it's not really going to matter much once it's all put together. This is very heavy stuff so the chances of me being able to move it into the workshop as a full sheet on my own were very low. After getting it cut to size I can start cutting mitres to the birch ply. I'm doing that to make it look like it really is a solid sheet of birch ply. And to fit the edging strips I'm going to use dominoes referencing from the top faces of the boards so that the edging pieces end up nice and flush to the MDF. A biscuit joiner would do exactly the same job as a domino here. After that I gave it a light sanding just to make sure it's all nice and flush. I can also clean up those birch ply edges. I thought I was being clever here by finishing the edges using a spray varnish prior to fitting the vinyl but it wasn't a good idea in the end mainly because when you apply the spray adhesive it tends to get onto the edges as well meaning I had to sand them down again and then refinish them afterwards. And then I can bring it in and this was pretty exciting because I put a lot of work into the kitchen at this point and the worktops are the final piece that will make everything look finished. I'm using my compass again to scribe the not so straight shape of the wall onto the back edge of the worktop and then I can get that cut out with the circular saw.
and I drilled a 60 millimeter hole where I'm going to be fitting some of these cable grommets for the plug that goes up from the washing machine to the socket on the wall. That gets fixed in place with some super glue. I'll leave a link to these in the description box. I can then fix the worktop to the cabinet with a few screws from underneath and add a bead of clear silicon to the back edges. So I was hoping there was going to be enough of the vinyl to do this end wall as well, but unfortunately there isn't. So I think I'm going to just skim this wall to tidy it up. I'm using a basic filler for this. It sands down smooth, nice and easy, which is a good job because I'm no plasterer, but I always find that using a trowel helps me to get a nice even finish. After the first coat and a couple of touch-ups, I can sand it all smooth and then I can finally get it all painted in. Then I made the final piece of worktop in the same way as before, except this time I left the finishing of the edges until after the vinyl was applied and that worked much better. When it came to installing the second worktop, I had left it a bit oversized and then I could sight it through alongside the worktop that's already fitted to get them aligned. I wanted to see how much needs taking off and it kind of kicked out at the end. Hopefully you can see what I mean in this footage. So I took a bit of a wedge off the back and then I can scribe it into that wonky end wall. And that looked good there, so I fixed it in place. So here's a quick reminder of how the utility room looked before we made any changes, and here it is all finished. I want to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of using vinyl flooring instead of laminate. Floor vinyl is quite a bit cheaper, but I've already talked about that. It's also thicker, it's about 2mm thick instead of 0.7mm and that's because it has a kind of rubbery backing on it which has a very slight bit of give in it but once this is laminated onto a board there's no real deflection or anything, it is just as rigid as laminate once it's glued down. It also looks good, I think, and it's available in thousands of different designs and styles and colours. However, it isn't as easy to work with as laminate. It's harder to cut and also the edges don't cut so clean because it's reinforced with some kind of mesh, nylon possibly, I'm not sure. And also the edges need a fair bit of work once you cut through it. I found the best way to deal with that was with a carbide scraper and then following up with some sanding and once you do that you'll have edges that look every bit as good as laminate in my opinion. It's just that it takes a bit of extra work to get there. Also the particular vinyl flooring that we use is also a bit rough on tool blades which I found out the hard way and I think that's because of the particles of stone or whatever it is in this design. My flush trim router bit has many small chips in it now and my plunge saw blade doesn't cut as well as it did. But as I say, I think that's because of the particular design of vinyl flooring that we chose, rather than the vinyl flooring material itself, if you get what I'm saying. It's also not as smooth as laminate to the touch. It has a rough surface to it, as you'd probably expect with a non-slip flooring product. That's neither an advantage or a disadvantage in my opinion, it's just something to be aware of really. In terms of durability for cutting with a knife and things like that, well, we use chopping boards so that's not really an issue. We're never going to be using it as a food preparation surface anyway. It's obviously impenetrable to water and considering it's designed to be walked on, I have no doubts that it will last for many, many years. Can it cope with hot pans though? I don't know, so let's find out. Thanks to my lovely mother-in-law for providing a pan and a stove for this experiment. After bringing some water to the boil, I left it on there for about three minutes, checked underneath, and all looked absolutely fine. Obviously, I can't say if all floor vinyls are this resistant to heat, and do your own research if you're looking to try this. I hope you've enjoyed this short series of videos. Thank you for watching.